Host. So the origins of Host are actually a little bit tricky. The movie came out during COVID, so not that many people heard of it when it first came out. And what it's about is this group of friends who gets on a Zoom call, as we're all familiar with because of the times of COVID. Because they want to do something different on this Zoom call compared to what they normally do with each other, they invite someone to host a seance with them. Yeah, I'm with you. Probably not the wisest thing. And the first super unique thing about this movie is it's not even an hour long, so it's not really feature length. But it is actually listed as a movie on Shudder, even though it's more of like an episode of an anthology, I guess. But regardless of all that, I didn't really hear about this movie when it came out. But the reason I know of it and I heard of it is because it's on that list of all like the scariest movies that ever came out. There's this list or something they're tracking of the heart rate of viewers when they watch it. And this movie, I guess, hit number one for a while. Since then, it's probably been dethroned by Sinister and a couple of others. I think like Skinamarink. But either way, I wanted to check this one out. Because of that, I did have some expectations, so I did go into it thinking it was probably going to be pretty tense, pretty scary. But either way, the way this movie starts out, you have a group of friends all joining a Zoom call, and they're going to start their weekly meeting with one another. And pretty soon, you have this group of five or six friends with this person who's going to run the seance, and they're about to spend their weekend night trying to contact someone from the dead. And because they're trying to establish some background for the character so you care, about 15 to 20 minutes of this movie's runtime, which I said isn't very long, is just getting to know the characters. Which to me is always kind of a risky thing when you do a found footage movie because the scares are only going to be visual most of the time. So if you're going to give up about a third of your runtime to get to know the characters, it better be effective. And starting with that, I actually did think it was kind of a little bit hard to get into this movie. I know, like I said, it's not that long, but it really felt kind of like a drag getting to know the characters. It wasn't anything to do with the acting or anything. It just felt like it was taking a while to get into the premise. But going off of that, I mean, the acting is pretty good for this movie, given that it's a found footage movie, which is really weird because we've probably all seen a handful of these movies where the actors and the actresses can't act at all. And something cool when it comes to the acting in this movie is apparently the director gave the actors a lot of liberties to do like improv lines because they were friends in real life. And because they weren't allowed to break isolation during COVID, they were all doing their own special effects like individually in their own house, which I think is actually pretty cool. But anyways, once this group of friends kind of gets going and they contact the dead, obviously this weird paranormal stuff starts happening. Something else I thought was really weird about this movie, or kind of funny actually, is that the person who's running the seance with them kind of has like the worst answers and reasoning for everything that's happening. You have this one girl who kind of makes fun of the whole fact that this is going on, and, and the person who's running the seance kind of gives her the reasoning that like since she was messing around and not taking it serious that the spirits are going to get nasty with her. I know, I know, it's a short runtime, it's a found footage movie, but it kind of felt really forced, like the person has had an answer for why we needed to progress this plot really fast. But yeah, getting away from the plot, because it is super generic, you know, it's a Zoom call with a lot of jump scares. I did think this movie was a little bit like scary and tense once you get past the whole setup, but it wasn't scary in a sense of the way it was written. It almost felt like it created tension by using a cheat code of the way they used angles just because of human nature. And what I mean by that, you basically have every character in this movie sitting in the dark with a candle lit because it's a seance. And over their shoulder, they have like an open door and it's a pitch black hallway because they don't close the doors behind them. And because of that, it's human nature and you know some shit's coming through the door. So it's pretty much relentless in terms of tension because you know they're going to throw a jump scare at you. You just don't know when it's coming. That are a mix of, you know, people getting dragged through doors off of their chairs. You know, you have lights flickering, candles going out, shadows appearing in the background. I mean, nothing in this movie you've never seen before. But I will say, even though this movie doesn't really reinvent the wheel, it's not bad at what it's trying to do. It is pretty effective at creating tension, especially over a Zoom call with shadows, you know, visual manipulation. And at the fact that it's only an hour, I actually really appreciate this movie. I kind of hope there's going to be more movies in this format that are only about an hour long to just kind of get to the point. But something this movie does manage is to do pretty cool that I really like it whenever a movie can do this is they have these six Zoom calls and they kind of have stuff going on in the screens that are not in focus. What I mean by that is like if you're zoomed in on me, you'll have like some of the screens off to the side where you'll like notice stuff in the background, but they never really draw a light to it without bringing too much attention to it, if that makes sense. Because I noticed some of these, I actually like went and Googled afterwards to see if I missed some and I actually missed a handful of the ones they were showing. So I thought that was pretty cool, little Easter eggs to make the movie rewatchable. And I will say when this movie kind of gets going and gets ramped up here in the last 15 minutes and shit kind of hits the fan, I think it's pretty damn good. It's pretty intense in those moments. I think it's highly effective. You have basically a consistent body count. You have like relentless action. It's bouncing from camera to camera. Each person's POV. I thought it really worked. That's obviously pretty damn good for me. I mean, it's a quarter of the movie immediately is intense. I mean, I'll take that every day over a drawn out movie. So I will say that I definitely think it's a good time watching this movie. But just to taper your expectations, if you come into a movie like this because you've read the things I read and you've heard it's on the list of the scariest movies, you could be disappointed. But if you come into this movie with the expectation of just watching a really brief found footage movie where you're going to have a good time for about an hour or so and it really gets into it, I recommend this movie. Just know that you're probably going to have seen the majority of these tactics and the things they're done. They're not really revolutionizing anything. They just do it really well. I will also say, in my opinion, it's compared to Sinister on the list. I definitely think Sinister is a lot scarier for me personally. I think it's a creepier movie, but 
yeah, I don't really agree with the list, but it doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it. So if you've seen this movie, comment down below. Let me know if you've seen this or what you think is the scariest movie, maybe. Do you think this was scary and sinister? What's a scary movie you've seen? As always, like the video, comment down below. Feel free to subscribe. There's going to be more videos to come. As always, guys, take care. Stay safe.